Well, how, just in general, what have you seen from the development of the defense from day one to today? Yeah, I think we're growing. I think that um, over the past half of the season, I guess I'd say the defensive coaches are getting to know the players and their strengths better. I think the players are starting to understand who we are and what our expectations are better. And, and um, I think it'll continue like that because what you know up to that point is just what you do against your own offense. So, so we've been growing. Coach, can you mind standing like here so this mic picks you up too? Yeah, there. appreciate it. Thanks. Have you been forced to make some adjustments just to that talent that you have from what you wanted to, what you started out with at the beginning of the year to now? We have made adjustments. I wouldn't say that? different than what we've wanted, but you always make adjustments based on who are the guys that are showing that they're playmakers, try to put them in position to do that a little bit more. Um, find out, you know, for example, with the defensive line, what are their strengths? Are they better moving? Are they better playing violently and vertical? You know, those are types of things that you identify when you start playing real games and, and uh, what, person, what personnel is the best to put out on the field based on this style of offense, based on this style of offense. Those are things you learn as you play with your guys. What goes into the decision to shuffle the inside linebacker rotation and maybe there's a game movement that gets one snap or six snaps. How did you make that decision? What are you looking at? So, I mean, part of the basis of this program is competitive spirit. You want the guys who are playing the best playing at all times. And, and sometimes that has to do with the opponent you're facing. And sometimes that has to do with the health of a player. And sometimes that has to do with simply who's playing better at that time. And so quite honestly, it's been a little bit of a combination. And, and um, I think that would go with multiple positions across the board. It's kind of on Mumo a little bit. He went from not playing as much to playing a lot Saturday on Super Turner on available. How did he perform against Illinois just overall in your eyes? I thought he played well. He made a lot of tackles. He was around the ball a lot. I think he's becoming more and more and more disciplined as opposed to just trying to just take off and find the ball because you know, there's times where your responsibility isn't such and you need to trust your teammates to do their jobs. And I think he's understanding the big picture more and more instead of just trying to purely be a ball hawk when your assignment at times doesn't allow you to do that. You talk about the defensive line. How do you feel about just the pressure you're getting on quarterbacks right now? Coach Fickle talked about sacks being overrated and it's really just about how much you're getting after the quarterback. How do you feel like the defense has done so far? We always want to do better in terms of pressure on the quarterback. That's just the honest truth. I think that uh, he's right about the quarterback feeling pressure is the main thing. You know, we we chart sacks, to be honest with you, but when we have our goals at the end of any given game, it's not a number of sacks, it's a number of havoc plays. We have a goal of 15 havoc plays because we do feel like it's more important for the quarterback to feel the pressure necessarily than actually getting the sacks. That being said, well, it's actually good too. Yeah. <laughs> Two younger guys who have taken on bigger roles this year are Ricardo Hallman and Daryl Peterson. Can you just speak to what you think each of those guys have done to become more consistent? So Ricardo's a guy that you recognized um, during the year that he had the same ball hawk ability that he showed in the spring and fall camp. You know, sometimes guys, when you get to know an offense because you play against them every single day, you feel you have the confidence to be that ball hawk. He's shown that he can do that week in and week out while still being disciplined. So that's really good to see that carry over. Um, Daryl Peterson's a guy that has shown, as we talked about havoc, he can create some havoc. And, and much like we were talking about Muma, what he's adapting to and getting better at is knowing when he has to be really disciplined and when he can turn it loose and be a little more freelance. You mentioned Havoc plays 15 per game is the goal? That's the goal. How, how frequently have you and your mind hit that goal this season? Probably about half the time. Half the time. Probably about half the time. Yep. We asked you about Niger and Niger and uh, okay, making the jump from D2 to Big Ten and the difficulties of that. How do you think he's doing, A? And then I guess now that you've kind of seen him do it, what is the, what is the biggest out? I mean, is it playing in front of big crowds? bigger, faster people you're going against, all the above, I guess? You know, I, I think uh, he's done a really fantastic job. He is a competitor, so um, he expects to compete and win every rep, whether he's going against any name the Division One program or name the Division Two program. That doesn't matter in his mind. I think the biggest step is how focused he or anybody has to do every single play because everybody you're going against is really good. You know, probably in Division Two, he was flat better than a lot of guys. And there were certain ones you really had to lock in on, and now it's all the time, but he's that type of kid.
personnel wise, it seemed early on you guys operated with that dollar package, those three safeties on the field, and now you've added one more guy in the box, more of a two four five look. What kind of led you need to the change in personnel, especially as big time You know, it's look at the last three teams we've played is what it is. I mean Rutgers, Iowa and Illinois particular the last few weeks, they are run first teams. They're absolutely run first teams. And so we felt like that was the best situation in those games and those given situations. So I don't think you've seen the, the last of the dollar packs. You got, I don't know when it'll be. I don't know what it'll be. But, um, you know, I guess the bottom line is every week we got to go into it looking at what we think is the best matchup for what an offense does and what they do best, try to get them to play left-handed. How do you approach Saturday and try to face a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. and just that passing game in general? Passing game in general is very, very good. Marvin Harrison Jr. is very, very good. I don't know that there's a, a corner in the country that can just lock him down in seven on seven drill. It just doesn't it doesn't work that way. On the other hand, they got players everywhere, right? So you can't and and, and they've shown a good job of getting the ball other places if people are flat out doubling him too. They've done a really good job of that. So you have to balance when you really have your focus there and, and you can't commit to that all the time. You have to trust your guys to be football players. So it's, a, it's going to be a balance because they have ways to um, attack you whichever way you go. The last one, is one of the other guys you mentioned, their tight end still there. Yes. He's, what, what props is he presenting? So he's as good as we've seen in terms of being a physical, very good blocking tight end and also being a very good receiver tight end. And because he does both so well, when he when he shows blocking, you got attack. Okay. But that makes it then difficult when he shows blocking and sneaks out. Okay. And that's where the real difficulty comes in because he is legitimately a guy who can hit you in the mouth. So you have to play physical there. And then he sneaks out and makes big plays, especially in the red zone. The last couple games, the run defense has given up 200 plus yards, obviously in different ways. I have one big hitter and all fired. Provide, presented some problems, but what's your assessment of the run defense overall and, and where you guys are at? We need to be big, we need to be better, right? But um, you make a good point. Iowa was one big hitter. We can't give up that one big hitter. There's no doubt about it, but it was one big hitter. Um, Illinois, quarterback has over 100 yards rushing, not on design runs, you know, on, on scrambles. So the numbers are probably a little bit misleading, that being said, with the University of Wisconsin, people shouldn't be able to run the ball on us, period. You mentioned Illinois' quarterback and his rushing output. How much of a concern is that for you moving forward as you know, quarterback escaping the pocket, making plays? We've seen that a couple times here in Purdue and Illinois. Always a concern if a quarterback can do that. And we need to have awareness. We need to do a better job with our rush lane consistency against those types of guys. You need to do a better job when he does escape the pocket of playing with great leverage and space. So those uh, plays were actually in position, which was a number of them. You know, we're able to, if we can't make the play, turn them to where all help is. So we'll focus on that, we'll improve on that. And um, yeah, you gotta be aware when the quarterback does that. What do you see as Kamoy Latu's role in this defense? Because Pickles talked about a couple of times, like. Maybe just a little too emotional. I had to get him out a couple of games early in the season. I was seeing him kind of do some things in the box on the back end. Like, what do you see his skill set right now? So he is an emotional player, which is a really, really good thing when it's pointed in the right direction. Um, and that's a perfect example of us getting to know players better and players getting to know us better, so that we can put him in the right position to do what he does. Right. So. Um, Maybe you've seen him in a little bit of different spots that allowed him to turn it loose a little bit more. Maybe uh, you've seen a couple times of like, okay, this is all 100% here about eye discipline and you don't need the big ass hit right now, excuse my language. Um, so maybe you make some adjustments in that regards, but it's about getting to know our guys and what their strengths are and where it's best to rotate and where it's best to turn loose. Safety's wise, it seems Preston Zachary is another guy who's gotten a good amount of play. I mean, while trading up Bayon hasn't played much, uh, as much since the first few weeks, what have you kind of seen from those two guys? One from Preston and the reason he's been able to get on the field and maybe not as much as right now. So I'm going to go right back to where the question was about the inside linebackers. You know, it, 
this program is partially, it's about our competitive spirit. It's about always scratching and clawing to get better. And, and we're not gonna make a permanent decision in preseason camp that's gonna last through week 12. It's constant, constantly going to be evaluated. And how you do this given week is, in addition to the other data we have from the previous week, gonna determine what your opportunities are moving forward regardless of position. So it's constantly under evaluation. The guys we feel like are performing the best or the healthiest or fit best against the offense that we're playing that week, those are the guys you'll see on the field. Playing, off, or playing Ohio State, is there any extra emotion for you to give your connection, or is it kind of old hat with your experience at Michigan State? It's a big football game, which absolutely fires you up. And yes, there's history, probably uh, um, more so for Coach Fick than there, than there is for me, to be quite honest with you. But I was at Michigan State for a number of years playing against Ohio State when my uncle was the head coach and my dad was a position coach, right? And that's more personal than it is now. But what we are getting to do is play against a uh, team that's rated at the very top of the country and see where we're at. Sure. Have you still been able to do much this week? Any kind of have any feel if you're feeling ready for Saturday? Um, still in the process. Still in the process. But I'm optimistic. I, I can I can tell you that. I hope he's going to be ready to go. But I guess time will tell. So Mike, with I saw Christian Allegro, you know, get in the game late uh, against Illinois. But having him, and Jones Diplona, Braden Moore, kind of on the travel rosters. Just what does that do for true freshmen to get that experience really on to travel with the team? And how's that help them later on? It's huge, right? It's huge, especially you talk about Christian. He was in in absolute crunch time. And he was in absolute crunch time because of the work he's put into this point, right? If you would have made that decision preseason, as we were talking about, he wouldn't have been in that situation. But he keeps working, coming in, putting an extra time to where the trust has increased so much. And now he's been on the field and had a pass breakup in a critical situation. And you know, it says like, oh, I can do this. I can, I can do this. And I felt the stress and it's okay I can handle it so those make big differences for guys like getting out on special teams in big games like this in front of the crowds I mean that's a huge step as well so we're trying to get guys those opportunities but they have to earn them. Let's Let's I can do ask one you more. a question about Marty Stry. He's the captain, plays on special teams, doesn't get in on defense but from what we've seen in practice it helps out a lot. What's your perspective on what the lift he's giving you this season? He's a coach on the field, first of all. He studies his butt off, knowing that he's not going to be in there a whole bunch on defense. So he's on the sideline, constantly coaching, talking to the guys, relaying messages, seeing what he recognizes. But he's also a guy that lifts the defense up every day, brings energy and positivity every single day, especially those special teams periods, but always.